Renekton. We've seen domination in the top lane from Renekton. Place your bets. Garen, Olaf, Darius. dare I say set. Yeah, yeah, everything is up for grabs for Adam on the top side of the map. Man play just about anything. Uh, but, but we will see, because I think the Lee Sin is a champion that's been getting banned out a ton. Got some small buffs, I, I think, on, on the kit there. Um, but always going to be a champion that crosses your minds when you come over to Worlds. But there we go. There the Darius coming out. Adam was all over the over the Garen in the series versus Golden Guardians to qualify here. But now we get the signature. I just love that, like, you come to an international tournament, there's a lot of players that'll have pocket picks and stuff, then they come to an international and they're like, ah, well, maybe we should just play meta, maybe we should play how, how everyone else plays. It's like, no, 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 no. This guy knows he's good. He knows how he plays, and he sticks to his style even on the international stage. I respect that. Yeah, and look, if you are not a viewer of the LEC, and the last thing you really remember of Adam is when he came to Worlds with Fnatic, this guy is a completely different player. He got sent down to the LFL on BDS's second team, re-earned his spot just at the start of this year, and he has been so dominant in the top lane. Tons of solo kills, leading the league, most splits up on the top side of the map has been doubling down on that unique style of these huge lane bully juggernaut champs as well. I was about to mention Talia was making it through the draft so far with the Azir and Oriana band it could be a power pick but is going to be banned away by BDS. I think Team Wales were trying to set up for the Talia there potentially and now Ivan taken off the board away from Shio as well. We've already seen some uh, jungle shenanigans uh, <laughs> against Golden Guardians from Shio when he got that Maokai. See if something like that can come out again. Yeah, Shio uh, on, on a lot of champions, I think, can be pretty impactful, especially the ones where you can get inside the enemy jungle. But we'll see, because B and J, obviously, very aggro on the opposite side. And if you can sort of beat Shio on those uh, on those early gank timings, you can generate a lead before he's able to get in your jungle, layer down vision, and protect his lanes. So we'll see where Team Wales are going to go from here. They've got their bot lane, they've got a top lane. Pretty strong lock-in so far. They want to leave that jungle until they know where Rel is going. So going for the Nico, great priority pick in that mid lane. And then they can find out where that Rel is going before they lock in their jungle. I would love an Alistar coming in here against these big engaged like mage champions, the Nico especially. If Nico tries to come in on an angle, just the headbutt to send her completely out of there. Ezreal can also say relatively safe versus the Nico. Because I think before this, Nico looks like a really awesome pick. You, you see like a lot of melee champions, that means pretty easily you're able to land your roots on the Nico. Ultimate's going to be catching out a lot of players. But now that Alistar really messes some things up. The Syndra as well to scatter the weak. If you're coming in on a flank, you're going to get stuffed as Glory on the Nico. It's very important that Glory finds ways to approach fights from the Fog of War or abusing, you know, the passive clone uh, thing so that Nuke and, and LeBron don't realize until it's too late that Nico's on them. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm quite liking the BDS composition just based on, like, there is so much ACC and B damage coming from this squad. Like, the, the one weakness you'd say is, like, maybe they could be outranged, but then when you look at what they're up against, I mean, Kaiser, no range whatsoever. Nico wants to get in the middle of it. Renekton wants to get in the middle of it. So it feels like this composition for BDS should be able to thrive with just, like, sheer damage, sheer CC, and a lot of, like, AOE damage as well. If you get people multiple knockups with the Alistair, with the Rel charging in as well, that sets up a huge burst out from your camp. It 100% does. I think Team Wales, too, have, have a couple of, like, abilities that are kind of must-dodges from BDS, right? You have to avoid Nico. You have to avoid Rakan. If you can do that, you're probably winning the fight. Team Wales going to be doing the same thing against the Scatter, the Weak, the Rel ult, the All-Star coming in. So once you can clear those abilities, that's where the 80 carries I feel like really got unleashed. Ezreal going to be hyper mobile. Kai'Sa can wait for that moment to dive into the fight. It's going to be so many fights that teeter on a knife's edge. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch, I feel. It certainly is. And I feel like, you know, watching that series against Golden Guardians, BDS were playing with pace, you know? They weren't playing slow. They weren't just waiting for the game to come to them. They were making things happen. And I want to see that again today. And I'm curious to see Team Wales because, you know, Coming from VCS, this is a region that is renowned for their kills per minute. Like this is a this is the region that took the kills per minute title from LPL just a few years ago. And since then they have maintained that high kills per minute. So I'm hoping and anticipating that this should be a little bit of a bloodbath. Yeah, Team Wales is a bit of an anomaly though, because compared to a lot of other representatives from the VCS, actually looking at them compared uh, to all the VCS reps that have rejoined ever since the VCS started re-attending international events, they are the least bloody 
of the early game teams on that front. Let's see what they do here up against BDS. Might be a little bit tough for B&J to get super involved early on, but uh, I have to say, in a late game team fight transforming into a Darius, I feel like you're cleaning up fights when you can take over Adam. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how those fights are going to go, but we'll have to see if we ever get to like the 5v5 situation because I feel like so often in an early game, we'll talk about like late game team fighting compositions. The and, scaling. And then, like, you know, in 10 minutes time, one team's 5k ahead. It's like, okay, we're never having a proper <laughs> 5v5. Uh, but I do want to quickly mention like Team Wales. This is a team that I think a lot of viewers at home won't have heard of before unless you've been watching the VCS since their first time at Worlds. And uh, this has kind of come off the back of Saigon Buffalo, a team that has been to us, that has represented uh, previously. Yeah, the Mark Ruffalo Buffaloes. Exactly, exactly. Well, the team uh, sort of disbanded at, at the end of spring, had some financial troubles, and Bean J was one of the players that came from that roster, joined Team Wales, and has brought a lot of power with him. He's one of the big reasons why this team has made it. The team generally loves to play around the bottom lane, but we're looking top for now as Adam the start. just charging straight in for the 1v1 to kick it off. Sparta wins those, though. A little bit of burn. Oh, my. Does he? Adam <laughs> flashing onto Sparta. Giga Chatham in the top lane. That's just I mean, stupid. In all the best way. I love that. Adam knows he will dominate the trade with the W. And now he activates Ghost. He's still going. And that's flash gone from Sparta as well. It's cost Adam both of his songs. But Doesn't matter. he has so much presence up here. He knows the enemy jungler is on the bottom side. He should be able to just get a crash and a free reset. And he's doing this because Sparta has Ignite on the other side too. So he's like, I need to take control of this lane quickly. Get that prio. Sparta's never going to be able to fight me. He walked in and warded Bean Jay's red buff initially as well. So Bean Jay might have a chance to avoid vision. Check this out. Missing ping on the red buff. The timing is Bean Jay could have cleared three camps, but he has avoided vision entirely. And Adam is super pushed up with no sums. The thing is, his minion wave is so large and Shio is looking to cover. Shio knows how his top laner plays, that the uh, gank opportunity fizzles out. And on top of that, like, Sparta's so low Oh my god, they're diving. Even if you go for... Oh, hang on. Not. They're actually going to go for this one. Bean Jay's in the area. This could get dangerous. Apprehend in the stun is there. But good dash away from Sparta. Negates the play. I love this, though. Straight off of the bat, we are seeing BDS taking this game into their hands. Yeah, they just want to keep pressuring here as well, because anything, Sparta's going to be missing minions. BA looking around mid lane for Nuke. Nice scatter of the week, though, and he's too close to tower to actually make anything happen. So back to top lane. We're diving. We're diving. They're just going to go for it again. Sparta, though, gets stunned onto Adam. The turret, that was hitting a cast of minion behind Adam, not hitting Adam. But these are wins on wins on wins. Bean Jay loses the flash. Sparta uses the ignite. No kill. And the minions, exactly. I was going to say, when you're fighting underneath the tower, oftentimes, you know, the blinders go on, and you just go for the kill. But BDS just denied, I think, seven minions that I saw underneath the tower just off of those two dive lanes looks at Sparta. The man is hurting in the top lane, and it's all off of that pressure from Shio. And one of the best bits is as well, Shio, he may be a camp or two down now, but BJ has kept on He's trying to come here. back up. Oh, BJ's going to walk in. Does drop the ward, though. He'll get out with his life by the looks of things here. Moving back up towards that top side. Shio now keeping BJ interested. He's actually winning the 1v1. Yeah, it's just ridiculous, because BJ, what else is there to do? All his camps could accept Raptors, so he wants to look for the top side gank. Shio has only cleared the three bot side camps. His Raptors have respawned before he's cleared any of his top side camps, and he's still oh toppling. God. He's actually gonna go for this again. He flashes for the pullback. You're going nowhere. Apprehended and taken down. Shio jousting towards victory. If you play top lane in solo queue, you have known the situation Sparta has found himself in, where the enemy jungle refuses to clear his camps. And you're like, eventually you just got to step up and farm a minion. He's only got 12, but he just one after another after another. Bean Jay's right there, just shadowing him, but it doesn't matter without any sums. It's just brutal. He's been absolutely brutalized. He is 20 CS down at five minutes. That is... I mean, can you recover from this is the question. He's going to need some help from BJ, but it might be a matter for Team Wales of abandoning this top lane and trying to play through bot. 
What are you going to do? I mean, BNJ was trying to reset as well. So not only does Sparta die, BNJ like wastes so much time here yeah. picking the wave up while camps are still alive on the bot side. Finally, Shio goes back, takes Scuttle Crab, takes two of the camps on the top side. So he's a little bit delayed on the tempo getting back onto the map compared to BNJ, but uh, Viega with no flash is not going to do anything in terms of actually finding a gank window. Maybe he tries, but... It's so tough, because now he has to cover for topside. This wave is pushing into Adam's side. See that? There's six, seven ranged minions yeah. up on that one for Sparta's side. So that's an obvious push for the Renekton. I think one of the toughest things as well is that because you went Ignite on the Renekton now and you're behind, you're never really going to have Shio kill pressure in the long back. run. <laughs> Shio. He's coming back. I expect Shio to just stay here pretty much all game at this point as he charges on it. Sparta, you're gone. It's another kill for Adam as they decimate this top side. But the Ignite is going to be useless, and he won't have a TP for later. Like, this is a disaster for Team Waves. Uh, how to watch just two players win an entire map, the tutorial, Adam and Shio. Uh, I mean, bot side is doing well for BDS. They're up 12 CS, which is wonderful. Scatter the Week doesn't quite connect. So Glory gets out of there with a quick thumbs up. But the fact is, like, BNJ was in position to try and cover Sparta. You have to cover Sparta there. It doesn't matter that you know Shio is taking the reset and has all of his camps on the bot side up. That wave is pushing in. There is an angle for Shio, and Shio is going to take that angle. Shio was at his best in the LEC when he was playing very aggressive inside the enemy jungle with BNJ's looking bot. The flash here as BNJ tries to get into the lane. LeBron low, but does still have his own flash available. Stunned up. Like a stun went through Crowny to hit him. Crowny trying to block that, I believe. But LeBron survives, and that's what's important. Actually kept his flash alive as well. As I was saying, though, I mean, hold on, because Adam's level six. The brush. Uh, <laughs> flashes are back now. Sparta's about to be in, like, half a second. But this wave in a tough spot. going to be really hard to farm. Nice guy of the week. Good damage. Oh, he could be in trouble here. It's a great route to answer, though. He'll survive. Not quite enough damage from Nuke at this point. The Dark Seal in pocket, you know that this is a Team BDS that wants to snowball. They had a, a very fast win in game number one against Golden Guardians. So far, so good to try and replicate. Sparta trying to answer this one. Ignite available, but just has to slice and dice away. Good news for him. Uh, jungler's on the bot side of the map, so surely Sparta's not going to get dove. Although now that he doesn't have the Dominus, maybe he just can be. He is down 30 CS at the moment. That is brutal. And now Shio's jumped over the wall, starting up the Dragon. Uh, BDS are a team that love to stack their Drakes, and it comes when Adam roams down. So he takes this early priority and just starts walking down on the map. He's not going to go for the full roam this time because they realize, hey, we have full bot prio. Mid lane's looking good as well. So he rewards the enemy jungle. Look at the coverage. Ward on red buff, ward on Krugs. There's that uh, control ward to the left of red buff as well that's going to last a long, long time. You're not going to do anything as Bean J on the top side of the map this game. And in the meantime, the bottom side are ahead as well. 10 CS, they've got Pryo to, to force this Drake as well. And Sean Noop falling a little bit behind in the middle. Okay. Lane. Oof. Uh, that was a weird <laughs> yeah. bit from both sides. So Glory was really short, considering the flash, the flash there because Bia could follow him up. But then, right when he was about to, sees LeBron come out of the fog board, cancels it. Yeah. But still got the flash out from Nuke, who was predicting the flash from Glory. As now, with no flash available, rooted up, might just be taken down here. That's a nice little kill, but a solo kill in the meantime. <laughs> Shadow. He wants more. Just take it over. BJ gets the hair rule, but Adam's here to try and apprehend it. Ultimate out from BJ. Okay. <laughs> Team Wales, let's keep fighting around mid. Let's try to fight around bot. Top lane is a disaster. We ignore that yeah. entirely. But the angle they just looked for in mid was fantastic. Burn the flash, then immediate repeat, and they find the punish. Hold my point for a second, because Shio might be going for something here. Charges in and just nice. takes the red buff Shio, away. Shio, big counter jungler in the LEC. Honestly, he's just not giving BNJ a second to breathe. And I want to just... Oh, let's do the replay, and then I'll come back to All right, point. I'm going to guess that he uses his abilities. Okay, there we go. W to slow. Yep. Sparta uses his abilities to run. Adam uses his abilities to chase. And then Adam kills. Okay, yep, that, that's how that, that works. <laughs> you know, 40 CS. <laughs> Adam going full oh, French. No. He loves a guillotine. As uh, Sparta could be in trouble again. Shio is here, pulls them in, knocks them both off. The sustain is there. And BNJ bleeds to death. Sparta's going to be next. Is the Q coming back up? Quickness, though. Oh, oh, but he channeled it just in time. The buffer is beautiful from Adam as he looks for a little bit more as well. And he still lives on. Adam is.
is unstoppable. Adam is here, and he's not here to play games. He's here to take names. Top lane, 5 0 and one dominating. He didn't even have the ultimate for that two versus three, and they turn it straight back around. It's just disturbing what he and Shu have done this game to the top lane. It's brutal. And on top of it, like, Team Wales, they love to play around Artemis. That's their usual game plan. And they feel like they can't this game. They feel like they have to focus on Adam. So they're playing against their usual strengths anyway. Just give up. It's not going to work. You think Adam's by himself. He isn't. Shio is always there. They are best friends on the top side. And look at that, I mean, like, Adam, every single Q, it's hitting two players for the maximum damage on the outside there. Here again, Sparta tries to walk in. While he's charmed, that Q still goes through from Adam for the kill. He just cannot finish it off. I mean, I'd love to see the total number of, like, healing in that fight from Adam, because he got solo so many times. Oh, oh my god, he's done it again. Does he just is bleed? Is the bleed enough? I don't know. There's a he's pot ticking away. The bleed is there. Is it enough? Oh, you better believe it is. Adam just can't stop. See, I remember I told you that's a different player than Fnatic Adam. Yeah. Yeah, different player. No, yeah, completely. I'm, with you. I'm yeah. with you. This is his name isn't even Adam anymore. We we call him Chatham. Yeah, this is this is something else. Like I can't remember the last time I saw a player have this many solo kills, have a 6-0 scoreline in 11 minutes in the game. I mean, he's making it look like 2015 Juggernaut Patch Darius. Like I, I don't know what to say. Like is this C9 balls in the top lane or is it Adam? It's just it's just disgusting either way. Yeah, this is uh, this is something else. And <laughs> Team Wales, they're, they're in such a tough spot in terms of trying to get control of the rest of the map again. Because, like, mid and bot relatively even. You've got a minor lead there for Glory. Obviously, did manage to get the kill alongside BJ, uh, or I think it was Bia actually, uh, in the mid lane onto Nuke. But aside from that, you're really struggling. And Shio, even though he sacked a lot of farm early on to make this camp happen up towards Adam, he's actually even because BJ had spent so much time trying to answer the camp. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's upsetting, honestly. I will say, I'm a big fan of coping. So, Team Wales, what do we do here? First step, ignore top lane. Sparta's gonna farm under turret as, as well as he can. He's probably gonna die a few more times. That's okay. We need to start investing in other areas on the map. That's gonna be around your duo lane, around mid lane. I think Glory is definitely a player you can get behind. Already has the kill, the lead. Now they're gonna get some turret plates into the Kaisa's pockets as well. So, lovely. That's exactly what we need to be doing for Team Wales. Now when it comes to the team fights, it is a hope and a prayer that we can kill Adam and that Bean J can assume his form in the fight. You turn into that turbo fed Darius, all of a sudden, all the early game doesn't matter. You're taking that for yourself, all those items. And those fights it's could actually, genuinely turn. It's actually a genius strategy from BJ. Oh, yeah, it's the strategy. Like, yep, get yep, the yep. Darius really fed so I can be the really fed Darius. It, Sparta is just so smart. It's all part of the plan. It's, uh, it's, I can't believe how much the bleed did as well. Threw a He's pot. potioning. Like, the, uh, the man is glowing green. And, oh. Not anymore, he ain't. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> not, not even a blink of emotion there. Puts a little grin on as the bleed finishes him off. Oh, dear. Adam is having the time of his life on the stage right now. And rightly so. Luke is top lane right now, but I don't think that's going to matter for Team Wales. Glory wants a reset, and as a matter of fact, that's just a lot of minions lost on the top side. As soon as actually all these players are showing, they're teleporting in, they want the fight. Rob, step backwards, does dodge away from the stun for Bean J there. Drake taken. Team Wales a little bit too late to the party to actually try and contest anything. And in the meantime, no teleport available because Sparta has Ignite, and that means that Nuke can just take a tower for free. Yeah, I... I think Team Wales went for that because turret plates were going down. I think initially Glory wanted to teleport top lane, then realized, hey, it's 14 minutes, so Nuke by staying up there isn't actually going to get a Lord. ton of gold. Good lord. <laughs> okay. Three and a half thousand gold! Uh, 14 minutes on a single player! That is absurd! <laughs> huh. I, I'm trying to, like, find a way to contextualize this. It's like... That's At a full mythic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like you're playing like an RPG game and you get into the late game and you just have like $400 million. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, you just buy all the luxury items. Like, Adam is just full luxury. He has <laughs> Stride Breaker plus boots plus uh, uh, some components there to a phage. Yeah. <laughs> That's the top lane matchup currently. I mean, the funny thing is, well, like, when you look at the gold difference between the two teams, Adam's individual lead is higher than the gold difference 
between the teams currently. Like, he's, uh, he's kind of hoping the rest of the team will pick it up, maybe, at this point. But yeah, getting a good engage here. Nuke in trouble. Nice. Great little ult from BJ. And that'll finish the job. Great pick on the bottom side. There's BDS in the meantime, we're going for the Herald. Yeah, that, that's exactly what you need to look for. Look for cross-map plays. Sacrifice Herald, but Sparta gets to easily farm in that bot side. BJ gets the kill. Artemis has push in mid. Like, they actually get to win in two lanes very briefly for the price of the Herald. Difficulty is going to be, of course, it's not so simple to do that for the coming Dragons because BDS are a team that puts so much priority on stacking the Dragons early, they force you into those fights in the mid-game. Maybe Team Wales can give the next one because, frankly, if Adam shows up, it is completely Jover, uh, but uh, that fourth Drake, they're going to have to put up something. They're going to have to, especially with Mount, like Mountain, especially with the Alistair, the Rel, you're going to get so much value out of that kind of Drake sort of game and it's not like I think the thing that I'm struggling with in this one is like BDS are so far ahead through Adam in this one and while Nuke is behind in the mid lane Crowny has a ever so slight CS lead but realistically there's, there's no difference in our AD carries here like there is real incident it's not like they need to be ahead right now it's not like these are champions that are going to fall off later on like BDS they're absolutely chilling let's make a pact Let's not talk about Adam okay. until 20 minutes minimum. Let's see if we can do it. Obviously, if there's no fight, we're going to have to say the name. But I I am personally tiring of talking about how far ahead that player is. Um, so I think it's really important to say Glory has the second highest damage in the game so far. <laughs> yeah, he yep. does. He certainly does. And that's managing to get 600 if you double ahead it, it still doesn't Sparta. catch the other number, but it's all good. Uh, <laughs> I just want to let everyone know as well, this is our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. It's BDS versus Team Wales here as the BCT second seed tries to make their name on the international stage in their international debut. And so far, a, a certain player that will not be mentioned mm -hmm. says no. Indeed. Glory going to be able to pick up this turret on the top side. Overall, only two and a half, three K down. But uh, this mid lane turret is certainly going to be falling on the push right there. Four players grouped up as BDS jump on to BJ. He's going to pull out again and still in trouble. He has to flash. It's the second time now he's just been forced away. Demanded to use his ultimate to escape. And if you just look at the minimap uh, currently, like the, the fact of, of how much vision, forward vision BDS have, make the game impossible to play. Because Team Wales looking for the cross map pressure or anything like this, it doesn't work if BDS are just pushing into mid, and looking for picks doesn't work if they see you coming a mile away. Who could be in trouble here as Glory tries to move up? No, he's not! They toggled vision, even I was baited! And Glory goes down. As uh, We're not at 20 minutes yet, I won't mention yep, his yep, name, yep. but a certain player might have just rested seven kills. Uh, Nuke just uh, at the end of the fishing line right there, just reels Glory on in. Completely destroyed. But this is what I'm talking about. There's just pings nonstop. I actually don't think Glory had been seen with the vision coming through. I think he avoided that narrowly as the base was being channeled there, but it doesn't matter. He showed up uh, on the vision when it mattered, and now we're just 15 seconds off of Drake. Positioning on map tells me Team Wales don't want to fight this. Yeah, BA looking for a reset here. Only has one ward on the support item. Mm -hmm. So he's actually playing top side and again looking for some kind of cross map. That's not going to work cross mapping around this Renekton though, perhaps. Just offering some uh, support and uh, of course maybe a chance to place that ward on the enemy blue buff, which yeah. he does before looking for the reset. The one thing I'm looking towards for Team Wales here is, you know, Artemis now two items, or two and a half items on this Kaiser. The guy's known as a bit of a team fight monster. Like, it, it, this team's identity is not really about just like slaughtering the early game. It, it's much more about winning those team fights later on. So, hopefully, there's a situation where, you know, us, we've seen already Kaisers absolutely assassinating people. Yeah. We've seen what this pick can do with the right situation. I mean, Kaiser versus Ezreal, almost a famous matchup for being able to just one shot the Ezreal. So, BDS, even though they are ahead, even though they've got a big lead up in that top side, like, they do need to be cautious on how they play because. You misstep for just a second, 
you are going to get one shot. It's true. I, and I, I'm, I'm kind of of two minds about this Kai'Sa build because obviously, like, all inning on the lethality early is so much burst damage, especially on squishies. But if you're forced into a position where you have to fight front to back here and you're just hitting a Darius, a Sejuani, an All Star, like, that's going to be neutralized pretty heavily. And I know, you know, the, the Kai'Sa like to dip into the AP after this. The passive, of course, is going to do a lot of percent HP damage um, and, and sort of make up for that when you are hitting front line. But I still think. The only fights that Team Wales really have a chance of winning are fights where Artemis can follow up on some kind of engage from like Glory and BA onto the squishy back. Trying to get onto Adam here. Four man stack. Adam is tanky though. He pulls him in. He heals himself up. And the rest of the team arrives. It's disaster for Team Wales as they try to find a pick and they just get slaughtered. Three picks for BDS and straight onto the Baron. You just can't kill him. He is going all the way. Now Lebrov and New hunting down the last two kills. It's a support and a minion fleeing the scene of the crime. <laughs> PA is going to pull on that minion. I don't think they're supposed to be able to run that way. Yeah, Glory's going to try and get away. I don't know if they're going to make chase properly, but actually it looks like Crown, he wants to head up towards that direction. Glory tagged. Red buff, I think, taken away there. So the slow should be in play as they look towards Scatter the Week. Potentially, Glory trying to get out with his life, but they will not allow a single soul to escape. BDS, they take Baron, they take a delayed ace. They might even get a tier two in the mid lane. Adam goes legendary in that fight. Remember, I was like, I don't know how they really get through this front line. Uh, <laughs> Adam just would not die. And the fact that his, his Q is hitting three, four players every single time, that's just an absurd amount of healing. Yeah. Oh. I mean, BDS coming into this tournament look so this, good now. And I mean, Artemis is here, but again, it's the lethality build, so it's the damage actually coming on in. First of all, big shield onto Adam initially, then the Q to survive. He also hits the Punny Flute. Um, is able to scoop up maybe one or two off that. I, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> the the uh, stride break at Q onto Artemis just did like two thirds of his health. Yeah, he's been breaking, ankle, breaking ankles all game. I, Adam didn't even like go towards Artemis to try and finish him. He just walked off to the rest of the team. He's like, you get that one, Crowny. That, that one's yeah. for you. That's a little freebie. I'm going to go kill everyone else. That, that's like awesome though, right? Because that's how you need to play the... I'm going to hold that thought because Glory's a minion again. Count your minions. Okay. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah. he's not going to get away There's four melee time. minions. <laughs> I wonder what the where, which one's the Nico. That's a little game you can play. But yeah, I mean, just the Darius positioning in the middle of as many people as possible is exactly the position you want to be in. Maximize that AoE damage. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, the healing as well. The first Q got him like 500 health back mm -hmm. or something absurd. It's It means you're so much tankier Count than you actually minions. look. And he's already pretty tanky. Count Glory. your minions! Trying to get onto Crowny, but good buffer on the E, and now suddenly the crash down is there. BDS with a beautiful re-engage, and that is going to break this game wide open. Adam's not even doing anything, and they're winning the fight. Like, what is that, man? Glory went for the big play, but Crowny way too slippery. This was an absolute shellacking from level one, with Adam flashing onto the face of Sparta in the top lane. Shio never left, and BDS never let off. Adam literally started the game by ganking his own <laughs> lane, and just decimating from there. 14 to two, a 24 minute win here. BDS, they have shown up to play-ins. They dominated Golden Guardians to get here, and they are meaning to carry on where they started off here. 15 to 2 as they look for a couple of bonus kills. Shio just about gets away with his black as the Nexus falls. Welcome to World's BDS. After the 3-0 to qualify versus Golden Guardians, they look good here in their first Worlds match up against Team Wales. I mean, just obscene things happening on the top side of the map. And now if you are Team Wales, it's all got it. Like, I don't know if it is the gods ban and you have to take away Garen, Olaf, Darius, and just uh, whatever it is, don't bang pick top line. I think that's rule.